A king tide brought sea levels up and a storm was pushing big waves at the coast. This is Cortez Avenue and back in January, this place was a mess. You can see over here the sandbags that they were using in part to hold back some of the sand and the water that was coming onto this street. If you look over here, these are the big rocks that are designed to keep the ocean off of this property. Didn't quite work out that way. The water was so high and the waves were so big, it just washed right over and brought with it sand and water. That, of course, is Cortez Avenue, where a lot of that water went when it came over the seawall. But it didn't stay there. It can't. It was too much of it. That water actually ran much of it into this estuary, the Tijuana River estuary. And it looked more like a lake than the wetlands it looks like now. It was a pretty normal king tide and like it looked like the ocean had just expanded and was coming at us. Serge Dedina is the mayor of Imperial Beach. And so we're just seeing a lot more things happening that we just never used to see, see before. Dedina knows rising ocean levels are a problem for his community of about 28,000. He joined us to talk about rising sea levels, but not where you might expect. This area is on the northern edge of the town, and it's already feeling the effect of a rising ocean. We're at the south end of San Diego Bay. This is a, a little uh, inlet from the bay, which is a national wildlife refuge that connects to our storm drain system and then flows under Bayside Elementary School, which is a steam academy. This was this was still a wetland right here. So really what's happening with sea level rise and coastal flooding, it's the water's reoccupying the area that it used to flow through anyway. Dedina says Bayside Elementary's future is uncertain because flood maps show this neighborhood could be mostly underwater if ocean levels continue to rise. Dina says it takes just a little stormy weather to make that happen now. 25 to 50 mile an hour northwest winds pushing water this way, a king tide, heavy rain. We're getting heavier rains than normal because of all the moisture in the atmosphere. And so water starts going like, you know, starts pushing this way. You get the whole storm drain system backed up and then you get start getting the rain flooding um, the neighborhood as well. That's already happening. Dedina says the natural geography that is causing problems may also offer some solutions. He says there is still a buffer between San Diego Bay and the public property the school sits on. He says turning that buffer into wetland habitat could help. Dedina says it's something city officials are already talking about. What can we do in a natural climate solution way? What, what are the adaptation uh, measures that we can take, what are the restoration efforts we can take, can we, can we sort of work with nature first and foremost and, and, and see if we can minimize the, the risks that way. Dedina sees promise in some of the wetland restoration the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has already done on the southern edge of San Diego Bay. But he's also realistic. He knows the ocean is capable of reclaiming parts of Imperial Beach and he worries about the rising water levels and how it will hurt the rest of his city. This year we spent $15,000 on, on taking sand out of a National Wildlife Refuge because the federal government was closed. That's our junior lifeguard program for the summer. That means that underserved kids that don't have a lot of money get free scholarships to go to the junior lifeguard program and spend the summer at the beach. Well, if we're spending all our money on, on sea level rise and, and coastal flooding, we can't help our most underserved and low-income kids have a great quality of life, and that's really important for me. And while quality of life is an issue at Imperial Beach, so is the city's economy. Visitors pump lots of money into the community when they drop in to enjoy the coast and beaches. Most of my tips come from tourists. They, they, uh, and they will come to take a walk on the pier, mostly. But yes, it will affect my business, yes. Cesar Romero relies on tourists for his livelihood, and while he doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about sea level rise, he does acknowledge an encroaching ocean could change everything, not just the shoreline. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.